Out of all the premium and custom controllers I've tested on this channel, Scuf has got to have one of the worst four paddle designs on the market. This is probably one of the worst designs out there. But my opinion of Scuf paddles, or in this case, rear buttons, has completely changed as the Instinct and Instinct Pro have an incredibly ergonomic design that is overall S tier, God tier, one of the best damn paddle systems I've ever tried. This does not feel comfortable at all holding your fingers like this to cover all four buttons. We're going to unbox this bad boy, remap the buttons, and get to flicking the sticks. Let's get it. So the Scuf Instinct and Instinct Pro is probably the most anticipated controller of 2021, and that's for a pretty good reason. This is the first time that Scuf has really revamped or remodeled their paddle design in quite some time, and I think this is good. I have reviewed dozens of premium and custom controllers from AIM Scuf, Battle Beaver, Razor, Nacon Revolution, Astro C40, Controller Chaos, Dream Controllers, just to name a few, and Scuf has one of the worst paddle designs in my opinion, because they're ergonomically not very comfortable, they're not very durable, and most importantly, you cannot cover all four of the paddles simultaneously. Simultaneously. So for people that play competitive shooters and take esports relatively seriously, that's a big deal breaker. I will say the Instinct and Instinct Pro, which we're going to go over the differences between those two models in just a minute, have completely revamped the paddle design, and this is actually a solid four paddle design. So between the fact that this is the first time Scuf has revamped their paddle design in years, along with the fact that Scuf has a solid track record of making well-built controllers, they do have some quality control issues, but most of these premium controller companies do, um, this is a very anticipated controller. So you've got this little sleeve on the outside here. This is designed for Xbox, obviously. You ain't gonna be using an Xbox One controller on your PS5. I guess you could with an adapter, but por, por que, why, you know? I'm learning Spanish, by the way. Rosetta Stone. Uh -huh. So the box itself is really awesome. Scuff has traditionally had a very premium unboxing experience where everything just looks and feels top notch. Change your game. I, I'm, I'm fixing to. So a lot of caution orange and this kind of black hex design, which I think looks really, oh mama, looks really good, I would say. So you've got this little foam piece in here, and this is to protect your thumbsticks during its travels. Not to mention, if you're gonna give yourself a pedicure, you can just shove your three toes I'm assuming you guys have three toes, I do, uh, in there like that, and you can paint those bad boys. Again, it's reminding you, change your game. Your game is whack. I've seen your snap shooting, it's busted. Change your game up. And you need a premium controller to do that. Marketing. Their unboxing experience is always top notch. Now I will say, this ain't really top notch. It's two clicks down from the top, the top rung up there. Why? Well, that's plastic, sweetheart. Some laser cut foam in here would be nice, especially when you're spending 170 for the Instinct or 200 for the Instinct Pro. And keep in mind, that's if you get the base, vanilla, missionary position, no thrills design. You don't get a custom faceplate or anti-friction rings or thumbsticks. You just get their base gray model. Now, I personally do think that this model here, the gray with the caution orange impact rings or anti-friction rings, uh, looks great. I kind of like this flat matte gray. Looks good. So even though there are dozens of premium designs on their website, pictures on screen here, I do think that this gets the job done. All right, let's set you aside for now, sweetheart. You got a little plastic wrap in here to, I guess, keep your controller clear of dust and debris for its travels. That's kind of cool. Um, you're going to stick your finger, one or two, your preference, dealer's choice, in the hole here and lift up and you are going to have an accessory box and your instruction manual. Now you have two pieces of documentation. You have some safety information letting you know not to use this thing like a Frisbee or not to repel down from your ceiling from the charging cable, just stuff like that. Things that sound ridiculous, but obviously if they're in a warning brochure, people have done it. And then you have your instruction brochure over here. Now I'm a bit of a connoisseur when it comes to instruction manuals. So we'll see if this does the trick for me. Okay, good font. English is the primary language. Not the finest parchment I've ever felt, but the important thing is this actually is quite descriptive and does walk you through the features of this controller, such as the trigger locks, how to remap the back paddles, how to swap the faceplate. But guess what? You don't need this. You've got me. I'll take care of you, sweetheart. Why read an instruction manual, which could strain your eyes when you can just watch a YouTuber explain these things for you? You know how they say a picture's worth a thousand words? Well, a video's worth a million. So how many subscribers were almost that? Ugh. Shiver me timbers, <laughs> stuff all over the place. So inside this box, it says accessories inside in case you thought this was full of lumps of coal or something. You're gonna have a USB-A to USB-C connector in case you wanna play this bad boy wired. Uh, it does have a little rubber tie back here. All right. It's not one of the ones that stays latched on to the cable. It just kind of pops off and hits you in the eye. Um, how long is this bad boy? Mmm, come on, sweetheart. Scuff. What you doing there, big girl? I got the wingspan of a Boeing 747. And this is about a five, six foot cable. Scuff, it's standard practice, or Corsair, I know that's your parent company. It is standard practice to include a 10 foot braided cable with a premium controller. But I will say, if you're playing on PC, 
This is generally long enough for you to plug into the front of your tower and uh, play wired. This is fully wireless, which is how I would play it if I'm on the console, the Xbox One or Series. Then you also get two double A's. You're probably thinking, Kevin, what are those for your mom's vibrator or something? Um, no, she's already charged up on that. It's actually for this battery tray back here. Yes, even though this is a premium 170 or $200 controller, it is still using disposables in 2021. Now, Xbox controllers catch a lot of flack for that. I actually think it is a good thing. Let me, before you light a flaming bag of crap on my doorstep and double tap the doorbell, let me explain why. You actually have the choice, the option of, do you wanna use disposables, which generally lasts a pretty good amount of time, but you will eventually have to sell a kidney or take a loan out in the money that you have to spend on these bad boys. But you can also get a little dock, they're about 15 or 20 bucks on Amazon that has two batteries and a charger dock. If that ever goes down for some reason, you're not completely screwed because you can just remove that and pop in some disposables instead of having to sit there for 30 minutes to an hour to get enough charge to play. So I think it's cool because you have the option. So what is the difference between the Instinct and Instinct Pro? Well, first of all, price. The Instinct is 170 and the Instinct Pro, is $200. And again, that is just if you get the standard gray version like this. The only two differences between the models is this rubberized grip back here and these trigger locks. That is completely worth the $30 price point and I feel like you will actually regret getting the standard because trigger locks, that is almost a staple of an eSports controller. I do like trigger locks over triggers that are permanently like a mouse click, a tactile mouse click because you can't play any racing games with that or if a game requires you to pull the trigger a certain amount, that controller is useless for it. As were trigger locks, you can turn them on and off. We're gonna talk about these trigger locks in just a minute. There's a discussion that needs to be had about these, um, but I think it's completely worth it. You have the trigger locks, which are unlike other trigger locks because they actually uh, turn it into a mouse click, not just a little piece of plastic in there that slides out and then blocks the trigger from being pulled all the way it actually turns it into like a mouse click, which is insane. Uh, and then you also get the grips back there, which I have to say, Scuff or Corsair makes some of the best silicone or rubber compounds I've ever felt. That is something I've always praised them on. Their thumbsticks and their grips um, are good. Whatever rubber they use, it's like a Ferrari tire. You're staying planted. So I'm gonna be playing some B-roll right now. Kevin, talking to you while you're editing. Put a little B-roll in there. There is some really cool accent pieces around the outside of the thumbsticks, which not only looks cool with a little hex pattern, but it's also very grippy. You also get that along the bumpers and the triggers and on the back paddles. If you move up the analog sticks, it says scuff in there and you get more of that design. That is a level of attention to detail that a lot of controller companies simply don't, they just, they miss the mark on. So some of the features of this bad boy. Well, first of all, you've got remappable paddles back here. And like I said, this paddle design is actually good. Is it the best? No, but it is a huge step up from the traditional scuff paddles uh, for two reasons. One, durability. These are a lot less likely, i.e. almost impossible for them to break off because, well, they're sunken into the rear shell. And two, you can cover all four of them simultaneously, technically. You pull outward towards the shell to activate these two and then push inward to activate the inward switches. So good design overall, I like it. Uh, then you're also gonna get the trigger locks, which as you can see, I have a full pull. So maybe I'm playing a racing game. Then I play a shooter. You're gonna flick these on. And now check this out. Like an actual mouse click. Very cool because most other trigger stops, just give me a second. I grabbed a couple of premium controllers from the living room. So generally you have an option. When you get a premium controller, you can get triggers that are permanently, no trigger locks. You can't turn them on and off. They're just a constant mouse click, right? All right. Those ones don't have the same satisfying click as the scuff, by the way. Or you get ones like the Power A Fusion Pro and the Microsoft Elite 2 over here, which allow you to turn them on and off. But when they're on, all it does is extends a little plastic bar in there that stops the trigger from being pulled all the way. It's not like a mouse click. It's still just pulling the trigger, but stopping it. You know what I mean? Trigger stops, technically. Now the Elite does have three-way trigger stops, which is cool. It has a halfway cutoff and then like a full-on cutout, like, yeah, those triggers feel phenomenal and, and they'll most likely last a long time too because generally mechanical switches have a really long life of between three and five million clicks. So that's really good. Face buttons feel great. Again, they're just standard Xbox One shell and Xbox face buttons, but it does feel really good. Like I said, the grips feel really good. The paddles is a great ergonomic design. You do have a mic mute button right here. You do have anti-friction rings. So when you are at full lock, you glide along smooth plastic instead of the rough plastic of the front shell. Since this is designed for the Xbox series brothers, you do have the share button right there, which I do really like. As for customization, the front faceplate is magnetized. So you just lift this bad boy off like that. And that is how you are able to pop out your anti-friction 
friction rings and pop in different colors or maybe get a new faceplate altogether. This is also a nice soft touch rubberized material. And if you wanna swap your thumbsticks, this is how you do that as well. I like to have the highest possible stick on the right, short stick on the left, and then I bump up the end game sensitivity about two clicks over default. I'm not 100% sure why Scuff or Corsair went with this particular lineup of stock thumbsticks, but I'm gonna show you something. Jeez, I did not wanna get off. Removing and putting these back on requires a good amount of pressure, and I feel like eventually that might wear out these thumbstick modules. The included sticks are two short concaved, one short domed, and one tall dome. So the only tall stick is a dome stick. I actually like dome sticks. A lot of gamers do not, so... That will be an issue for a lot of people, Scuff, maybe on your next version or iteration. Include six thumbsticks, not four, and include a couple of concave sticks. I like the convexed or domed, but a lot of people don't. Also something to keep in mind, I do not believe that these thumbsticks work with any control freaks, extendable thumbstick cap, so keep that in mind. That feels good. So the dome stick is a little bit slick, but I do think over time the oils of your finger and just the general friction will actually break in this rubber compound here and it will get more grippy over time. I have experienced a lot of dome thumbsticks like that. Overall, ergonomically, this feels great. It's based on the exact shell design of an Xbox series controller, but you do also get those nice tactile mouse click triggers and these paddles. Now, one thing I will say about the paddles, they're not all for the same switch. These two buttons right here, I keep calling them paddles. They're actually more so buttons. These don't have a nice satisfying tactile click. They feel good, good resistance. So you're not gonna accidentally actuate them, good response, but they don't have a nice tactile mechanical click to them. These ones on the inside kind of do. Maybe this little ASMR will, maybe you guys will hear this. Huh, I'm not complaining. I mean, they feel great. And I, I do like the design because your fingers, your middle fingers just go right up in the middle there and you're able to easily hit all four of them. <laughs> this is funny. I, this is actually probably one of the most intuitive and best four paddle designs I have ever tested. And that's funny that it's coming from Scuff, which is a company that I generally bash on um, specifically because of their rear paddle design. So for them to be um, S tier in my book now, they're doing something right over there. Here's those rechargeable battery packs I was telling you stallions about. These will be linked in the description below. So that way you have the option. If you want to use disposables because this, this is dead, you can do that. Quit giving Microsoft such a hard time about their disposables. So the actual battery tray drawer in this thing is magnetized and it'll kind of like snap itself into place, which is really cool. In case you don't know how to pair a new Xbox One or Series controller, you're gonna press the sync button on the top. She's gonna start flashing fast. You're gonna press the sync button on the front of your Xbox console. Don't look at my tuchus. Okay, now that status light's gonna flash and uh, we're, we're paired up. Now this mic mute button will only work if you have a wired headset plugged in through the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But if you do, this light will go off. And then when you press it and actually mute your mic, it will be illuminated amber or yellow to let you know that you are indeed muted. Now remapping the paddles is pretty easy. I have half a brain cell and I was able to figure it out too. By pressing this button on the back here, you're gonna see it'll swap through green, blue, and red, which are three default profiles in the instruction manual. It said first person shooter, racing, and frolicking or something else. You're obviously gonna wanna remap your own key bindings or paddle bindings, so that's what we're gonna do. So it does also mention in the instruction manual that if you wanna deactivate any of the paddles because you're gonna be sharing this with somebody that doesn't like rear buttons because they accidentally hit them or whatever, then you just remap them to the share button here. And that is more or less how you deactivate the paddles is by mapping them to the share button. So once you have the profile selected that you want, you're gonna hold down the mapping button. And as you can see, that's flashing. Now you're gonna simultaneously press the face button and the back paddle that you want mapped or back button, I should say. It's gonna continue to blink and you can just continue remapping buttons until you're done. And then you are going to press the remap button again and it'll take it out of mapping mode and into regular use mode. Now, as you can see, Sweet, we got all the face buttons remapped. Awesome. You can remap everything except the Xbox button, the share button, and the two triggers, which you wouldn't remap any of those anyway. So after getting more stick time with the Scuff Instinct Pro over here, again, I will reiterate that I would skip over the Instinct Standard, $30 for the grips and for these trigger locks, absolutely worth it. The trigger locks, that mouse click is incredibly satisfying. And like I said, will probably last several million clicks. Generally, most mechanical switches do. The paddle design is honestly one of the best paddle designs on the market. You can easily cover all four of the buttons 
and it's a very interesting and unique design unlike anything I've tested because it's not like you have to hold your hands out like this or sometimes there's buttons in the shell right here. Um, you just hold it ergonomically naturally like you would. This is how you want to hold a Xbox One or Series controller. But now you can do this or this, extend your finger out or pull in and you're able to hit all four of the buttons cleanly. I'd like that a lot. Remapping them is super easy. You have three onboard profiles. You do not need to have a software suite or program in order to have multiple profiles. That's all done on board here. Super customizable because you have swappable face plates, anti-friction rings, thumbsticks. The D-pad is also magnetized and you can get different color D-pad wheels on their website. Now, granted, you've already spent $200 on a controller and then you're probably going to end up spending an extra $100 on cosmetics, but I've really started to dig the standard gray with the gray face buttons and the caution orange anti-friction rings. This is a handsome looking controller in my opinion. I also really do like the combination of the soft touch front shell and then the rubberized grip in the back. It creates a very comfortable place for your hands. I only have one gripe or complaint here or one con and it's very easily remedied for their next version or not even version, just something that they could change in their shipping process right now. Instead of just four analog sticks, include six, so maybe two pre-installed and then four in the box, more concaved options because you have a high dome stick, but the only high stick, which a lot of people that buy paddle controllers are gonna be playing first person shooters and want a higher right stick for that nice precision aiming. For me, it's great because I like dome sticks, but the majority of gamers actually prefer concaved just include maybe a medium and high concaved in the box and I think that would be great and I actually do have one more shortcoming or con here and that would be the warranty you only get a six month limited warranty and limited being it does not include stick drift because well this is using Microsoft standard thumbstick modules so that's not really a scuff specific part but still it doesn't cover that but also that's really short six months a lot of premium controller companies offer one year or even lifetime for example aim controllers who I heavily promote because I really stand by their products, they have a lifetime warranty. Granted, it's limited again, so it doesn't cover things like stick drift, but still lifetime versus six months. I think Hex Gaming also has a six month. And I mentioned that every time I review one of their controllers, that's really short. Unfortunately, that is what she said. So yeah, if they could just bump that up to even one year, three year would be cool. I think Razer has a three year, if I do recall. Maybe I'm just making up numbers now, but there is a company out there that has a three year aim has lifetime hex and apparently scuff has a six month, which is unfortunate. It's also six months from the date that it shipped. Now, keep in mind, sometimes if you order from their website and you got a lot of cosmetic um, appearance customization, it might take several weeks or even a month to get out to you. So that's cutting into your warranty period. I find that rather unsettling overall, though, other than those two things, short warranty and more thumbstick options in the box. This controller is absolutely awesome. I think scuff did a dick load of R&D or research and development and have designed one of the best rear paddle slash button designs that I've ever tested. And I've tested a good amount of controllers. I'm going to be extensively playing with this controller and I most likely will do an updated review in about six months or so going over some of the uh, long term longevity and durability and whatnot. If you enjoyed this honest controller review, liking the video will help it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in the system as well, which in turn helps me grow this channel. And I do greatly appreciate that. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing and honest gaming peripheral reviews such as this controller. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.